they killed 1,300 of our people. They've got another some 200 held hostage. And of course, they want a ceasefire. They hit us hard and Israel shouldn't be able to hit them back. That, that is the Hamas position. Mm. We will continue to strike back against Hamas until we crush their military machine, until we dismantle their political structure. Gaza and the people of Gaza will be better off without Hamas. You've reported American Secretary of State Blinken uh, is here. He's been speaking to us. We're trying to find, in his words, ways to allow humanitarian aid to enter the Gaza Strip, but at the same time not, not have Hamas take the aid and use it for its own nefarious uh, purposes. You've got to remember, let's say a, a truckload of a, a tanker of petrol enters the Gaza Strip, mm. and they say that's for generators in hospitals. But the only people on the ground inside Gaza with guns are, uh, are Hamas. And surely the international community that is willing to, to generate, uh, to be very generous with, with, with the Palestinians, to what extent can we guarantee that aid is going to reach the people it can be? Hamas is brutal. Hamas uh, has no qualms whatsoever about hurting innocent people uh, for their own agenda. And once again, we want to hear guarantees mm. that, uh, let's say something like petrol, isn't going simply to arm Hamas's military machine, that it'll go to where it's supposed to go. OK, that's what's coming in. What about what needs to be going out, which is at least foreign nationals? Um, what, what, what about them? What, what should they do? And also, what about their safety? Four strikes this week. Uh, well, we're striking in the area because there's Hamas activity in the area. Mm -hmm. They've turned it into a war zone, not us. Uh, Hamas can't demand immunity after the terrible uh, attack they committed on Israel after the 7th of October massacre. And, and we are hitting Hamas and we are hitting Hamas hard and we will continue to hit Hamas hard. Of course, we don't target Gaza's civilian population and we're working with others to see what we can do to safeguard uh, that population. We've been calling for people to leave northern Gaza where the most intensive fighting is expected. Mm. Uh, we want people, and most people have already vacated that area in their hundreds of thousands. Uh, we understand, <clears throat> excuse me, that it is difficult to relocate. We understand all the logistical issues. It's, it can be very difficult, but it is preferable than to remain in a combat zone mm. and to be caught up in the crossfire. Uh, well, of course, but then some of those people are at, at the crossing and, and, and as you say, you're having to strike there because of Hamas. So is there anywhere safe for them? So we are working specifically with the Americans and there have been conversations with your, your government as well about how to facilitate the swift exit of, of first and foremost foreign nationals, British citizens, American citizens, others. We have no interest whatsoever in keeping them in Gaza. So how do I'm just I'm I'm just trying to put myself in their position, you know they've been told to leave they've been told to to go to the south they've been told to try obviously they want to get out because they're foreign nationals and 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 you know a lot of them waited at that crossing yesterday they may have been waiting at that crossing for for quite some time, and then there were there were strikes there that I don't know how safe they feel I just wonder how how would you think this will be concluded will, will they ever get out do you think? Of course it's just a matter of of. Uh, Crossing the T's and dotting the I's, there is a war going on. Mm. There is fighting. Hamas has no qualms whatsoever about using civilians as a human shield for its war machine. Okay. And we want to make sure that when this happens, it happens safely and that people get out without, can leave Gaza without getting hurt. You know, okay. Once again, we're working on this. If it was easy, it would have been done uh, already. Hamas wants a total ceasefire. They say, just stop all the fighting now. Mm -hmm. Of course they want to stop all the fighting now because we are hitting them hard. You know, they, they, they killed 1,300 of our people. They've got another some 200 held hostage. And of course they want a ceasefire. They hit us hard and Israel shouldn't be able to hit them back. That, that is the Hamas position. Mm -hmm. We will continue to strike back against Hamas until we crush their military machine, until we dismantle their political structure, Gaza and the people of Gaza will be better off without Hamas. In the short term, in the immediate, we have to do everything we can to safeguard civilian life and, of mm -hmm. course, to work with our international partners, partners like the US, like the UK, and get their foreign nationals out of Gaza. Mm. In terms of trying to attack Hamas, to kill Hamas leaders or, or whatever, whatever it is that you exactly want to do, how many of those Hamas targets have you 
hit because so far 2,800 Palestinians, half of them children, have died in, in, in your attacks. Can I just order, uh, can I propose a word of caution? Mm. Uh, and once again, I don't deny there's, there's a terrible situation inside Gaza and, and Gaza civilians are going through a particularly difficult period. But those numbers you quote, they are from the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health in, in Gaza. They're not independent bureaucrats, you know, health officials. That is the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health. Those numbers are provided to you by Hamas. Okay, so you those think they're numbers lower. Don't, those numbers don't make a distinction between uh, uh, combatants and non-combatants. Mm. And, of course, Hamas has a clear propaganda uh, 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 desire to play up the number of innocent casualties. So I ask you, mm. you have to say, I mean, you can report those numbers, but say that they are coming from the Hamas-controlled Ministry of Health in Gaza, and there's no way of independently verifying those numbers. The longer that this situation goes on, and if there is a ground invasion, more people will be killed. Which, which numbers then should, should we be accepting? Well, we want to kill the Hamas people. Let me be clear about that, and we want to kill more of them. They are a brutal enemy. They've inflicted violence upon Israel, unprecedented in the Arab-Israel conflict, unprecedented for the Jewish people since 1945, since the terrible years of the Holocaust. We've never had such a massacre. We've seen what they are capable of, mm. and we will destroy their military capabilities, and we will dismantle their political structure, just as ISIS was destroyed in its strongholds, in its territorial strongholds in, in Syria and Iraq, we will destroy Hamas's stronghold in Gaza. And I believe, sincerely, that is not just good for my people who will be safer not having this terrorist uh, uh, enclave right on our southern border, but it'll be better for the people of Gaza who won't have to live under this theocratic or autocratic regime. Mm. Um, can I just put the words um, of General David Petraeus, former CIA director, uh, to you, if you don't mind? He says, think now about what follows. The problem is you don't truly destroy Hamas. You're just mowing the grass again. Maybe you're getting closer to the ground this time, but they will come back. Who will administer this territory if, in fact, all of this is taken out? That That's that you get the general gist of what he's saying, that he doesn't yeah. actually feel that you can ever truly destroy a, an, an ideology. The concept of mowing the grass was maybe true in the past. I mean, as you know, as you've reported, there have been all sorts of rounds since Hamas took over in the Gaza Strip 16 years ago. We've had these rounds of fighting, and then the attitude in Israel was to re-establish deterrence. Uh, and so there was, they'd shoot rockets at us and we would respond, and, and that you could call maybe mowing the grass. We're not there. We're not there anymore. Israel has a different goal now. After that, horrific massacre on, on the 7th of October, mm. we understand that the status quo is unsustainable. It has to change. Uh, we don't need cosmetic surgery. We need serious, serious uh, change. And we want a new situation in the Gaza Strip where Hamas uh, no longer uh, has the power it has today, that we will have destroyed its military machine and have dismantled its political structure. We are looking for a new reality in Gaza. Now, the general, uh, who knows from American experience in Iraq, uh, says, what happens the day after? And it's, he's right to ask the question. And I can assure you that we're having conversations at the moment in the Israeli government of what are uh, uh, different contingencies, what, what we are looking at that, we're thinking about that. We are thinking, I think, three steps ahead and there are ideas, I can't share them with you now for obvious reasons, but we are not ignoring the after the war reality. But let's be clear, the reality we have today with Hamas is a very unpleasant reality. And all the other options, though there are, uh, many of them contain their own difficulties, they are immensely superior to the continuation of Hamas control over Gaza. Just as ISIS was defeated, we will defeat Hamas. Is one of them a per the permanent occupation of Gaza? That is not a preferential Israeli option. Mm. 